That's the chart we're going to use today, okay, right now. Okay, so go ahead, everyone, fill this up. So again, five, each one of them has four pluses, check marks, and one X. The X means you cannot use it for that because it doesn't even have it in it. Okay, so the one that's missing from the first one is the distance. The one that's missing from the second one is the acceleration. The one missing from the third and fourth, respectively, are in final and initial. And the one missing from the fifth one is time. Okay, so, come on. So we can see, as we said, that each one has four different variables and one missing one. Okay, so let's actually talk about everyone. Does anyone know what's the, what's the meaning of the word algorithm? Algorithm, what does it mean? Anyone here who codes or is looking forward to code at some point, what does the word algorithm mean? Say it. Prediction. Prediction-based system. Remember, whenever you're asked for anything, regardless of the level of the person you're talking to, simplify. Simplify. By the way, if you can say it's simple, you truly understand it. <laughs> Good. It could. An algorithm could predict. What could it also do? Or what it also does? Huh? It's a code. What does a code do? Keep going. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, okay. Control. Nice. Is it numbers? So in an algorithm. Okay, when you code, do you just put numbers? No, no, no. You're talking about machine language, like computer language. No, a code. When you code, when you code Python. How many people here code? Anything. C++, Python, Java. When you, when you code, do you just write numbers or do you write statements? You write statements. Those states tell the computer what to what? What to do, how to control the process, right? Like a flow chart. It encounters a bifurcation or a fork in the road. Should I, if, if, like for example, I'm walking this way. I encounter a, what, a wall, for example. I have one of two choices, either what or one of few choices. I could either stop, I could try to go through the wall, I could bounce, I could turn right. So it's a flow chart of what, of, yeah, sometimes what binary, like only yes or no, or multiple answers. My point is an algorithm is a what? Is a procedure. It tells you how to do things. Whenever you solve a certain kinematic problem, you need the what? You need an algorithm. So everyone, let's just let's discuss the what the steps of the algorithm. Okay. So everyone, step number one. If needed or what? Or what? Explicitly stated, you have to what? You have to sketch. By the way, most of the time, I'm not gonna ask you to sketch. But if I but I encourage you still to do it. But if I ask, you have to what? You but if I ask a sketch, you have to what? Because it has, it, what, it will actually have maybe like two or three communication marks in it. If I ask to sketch, even if you can do the entire thing without sketch, I need sketch. You know why? Because one of, sadly, the least practiced skills in your generation is what? Sketching. And by the way, you have no idea how much you will actually need to be a good, quick, semi-accurate sketcher when you go to what? To first year physics and math. It's insane. But sadly, people fail tests because they can't, maybe they could visualize, but they can't sketch and what put the numbers on. And then they have actually no way to proceed. So I'm going to show you quick sketching skills. Okay, number two. Decide what direction do you want to be what? Positive. Which means any other direction opposite to that would be what? Would be negative. And this is when we start what? Ditching vectors in favor of what? From now on, you'll see that every single thing I taught you with vectors, could be done with what? But instead of west and east, you use what? Positive and? Perfect. And then you designate, and whatever comes out, comes out to whatever sign it needs to be. Step number three. Sorry. So under that, this eliminates the need for vectors. Okay. Step number, and treat everything as scalars, which could be positive or negative. Step number four. Read the word, sorry, three. Read the word problem, and what? What I like to call translate. Translate the words into what? Into the math. How so? By representing the key information using proper kinematic variables and state. How many people have done the, okay, how many people have had math teachers who always want them to use the, I think it's called, see, I barely know because I never use it, the GRASP method, G R yeah. So G-R-A-S-P stands for givens, so you have to state your, so givens, and then R is what required, like what you're trying to solve for. A is analysis, I think. S is solution. And P is prediction or what? Is it grasp or grasp? Oh, 
Okay, so S is state. Oh, the third word statement. Oh, okay. Or your prediction of what's gonna what what does the problem actually say at the end? Okay, this is basically it, but in not so much what like like G R A S S form. Okay, what's my next step? If you know what you have, you know what you're what. You have to know also what you're looking for. Okay, step number five. Once you know what you have and what you need, then you decide on what. But did I did I say decide which kinematic equations or equation? There is only one that is guaranteed to work. By the way, it's like sine, cosine, and tan. You know that always what one of them what definitely is needed. Can you use more than one? Sure. But you are actually marked on being efficient, which means what? You're marked on knowing the perfect one that works from the first shot. Okay? Number six, you have numbers. Great. Put them in the equation where they actually belong. Replace the known kinematic symbols with proper numerical values. Everyone, last step is what is saying what? Use. Okay. Do you, in every single math problem we've done so far, did we always need to do some algebra or? Could sometimes it be uh, plug and play? So if you're lucky, it's just a what? Plug and, and what? And value it. But sometimes you might need to what? Move things around. That's called what? Algebra. OK, so let's apply those steps to what? To the, the problem. OK, everyone, let's look at the first problem. OK. What does it say? It says that a car um, accelerates right there. By the way, when you read the word accelerate in a physics problem, does it always mean speed up? It could, it could still mean what? No, no, but it could still also mean what? Deceleration, right? It depending on what, if it comes out to be positive or, oh, so you don't know, because remember, what is the only word usually used in physics? Accelerate. No one says decelerates unless you're talking about the therefore statement, guys. Yeah, I could say I accelerated backwards, which means what? I decelerated going forward. Same meaning, but watch out for these words. So accelerate from what? From what? What does from rest mean? You have five kinematic variables. What does that mean? Initial velocity is? Great. So go ahead and write what? Right here, just right here. Zero meters per second squared or just second? It's a speed. So it's just what? It's just second. Nice. OK. At a rate of two meters per second squared, what is that? That is your rate of acceleration, not your final speed. OK? Last question. Or what is the question? What is the displacement of the car after how much of a time? After 15 seconds of keeping the same rate of speeding up. OK. First of all, this 0 is which uh, one of the five variables? Oh, sorry. Let's quick sketch a quick diagram. Here is my road. What direction is the car moving on? North, apparently. So let's, uh, let's say this is north, which means by default, this has to be south. Okay. Initially, what was the state of the car, the state of motion of the car? It was at rest. So, yep, so car. Okay, everyone, this is how I always indicate stillness, like no motion. I always put these lines. Like as if the car is what? Shaking in place, but it's not moving. What happens after a while? It's what? It's what? It's on the what? It's on, it's on the move, right? So that means what? Is it still or moving? So that means I like to put some wind effect behind the car. So same thing. We've got this. All right. Let's put some numbers on this. What's the speed here? Yeah, go ahead. Oops, sorry. Zero. Meters per second. Um, how much time passed by? 15 seconds. Never put time on the ground. Where do you put time? Up in the air. Yeah, it's always good that way. So you just go like this. 15 seconds. Do you know the initial, the final speed? You don't. You don't know it. Okay, no problem. So I'll erase this. Uh, do you know the distance traveled? But do you want to find it? Awesome. So. Let's put it on the diagram like this. What do I know in the middle? What happened? So what's happening in the middle? It's what? 
it's excellent. It's picking up speed. So in here, we put what? Two meters per second. Because it says so. It is gaining speed in this region at a rate of two meters per second squared. Okay? All right. Let's put the what? Okay, so you have another blank slide, right? So everyone, on your blank slide, so you always have a problem, so some space for the sketching. And now on your blank slide, we do all the math. So on your blank sli slide, you're going to do VI equals what? Oh, my bad. Which question, which, uh, what was the, okay, uh, Ali, what was the second step in the steps? What was the second step in solving kinematic equations? Not the first step. First step is sketch. We're done. What was the second step? Which direction do you think is going to make sense to make positive? South or north? Because naturally, which way is the car moving? So for everyone, from now on, grade 11 physics or 12 physics, wherever something is moving, make that direction what? Make that direction positive. Because then everything is going to come out what? Naturally positive the way it should be. So what do you do? Nothing. You just put what? Positive here and negative here. So do you need to say this? Sorry. Uh, do you need to say this? Not anymore, because now, every time you have north, it's just what? Great. So from now on, no vectors needed. OK. Uh, what's your time? 15 seconds. What's your acceleration? Technically, are you, uh, actually, are you accelerating neg uh, negatively or positively? Good. So you can just put two. No need for positive two. Now. How many things do I know? Three. How many things do I not know? Two. Because remember, five variables total, total. And the distance and the what? Final speed. But which one is the question asking for? But a displacement, which is basically in a scalar way, it's distance. So which one is completely missing from the list? No, no, missing. Not unknown, missing. And what? OK. Can I just... Everyone, why am I asking which one is missing? It's always easier to look for a single x than how many check marks for. So always what? Judge the equation by which one not is unknown. No. Which one is not needed? Which one is not needed here? Final speed. Which one here doesn't care about final speed? Third equation. Done. That's how you always assess. Assess by what you don't need. It's easier to look for it that way. So, yes, absolutely. How many things? How many things do you see here? Four. So in a way, to assess which equation you need, you have to find an equation with those four. But it's easier to find the equation with the fifth one that doesn't even matter. It's e Yeah, not missing. The one that's completely unnecessary. That's why I don't say missing. I say unnecessary. Because this is missing, and the other one is missing. But the fifth one is unneeded. Is it making sense? One of them we want, one of them we couldn't care less what it is. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Do you need final speed to calculate for uh, distance? No. You could use it and then what? go back to it, but that would be how many steps? You would lose marks then. One big point of this course is being efficient in your kinematic equation solution. If you use another equation that you don't need to solve for something you don't need, to use it in the what? In the one that you, do, you need, you lose marks, because even though you got the what? Right answer at the end. But it took you way too long. You did not assess the toolbox properly. Is it making sense? One shot definitely works every time. So everyone, which equation? Come on. Third. All right. Again, you have more space because you have the blank slide. OK. What's the equation? Delta D equals what? Come on. VI delta T plus 1 half. A delta T squared. What's the good news about my VI numerically? My VI is what? Zero. Zero times any number in the universe is always zero, no matter how huge that other number is. So right there, everyone, feel free to do this when you do things by hand. By the way, this is a common notation with math teachers and physics teachers. When you have a zero, just go, sorry, just go like this and just write what? Just write zero. That means that thing is going to kill whatever is multiplied or divided by it. OK. So that means 
delta D equals zero plus one half. What's my acceleration? No, acceleration. Two. And don't forget, uh, don't, sorry, don't bother about units in the middle steps. Then what? 15 squared. How do you do this one? Exactly. One thing you could do is two things at once. You could multiply the half by two. That gives you what? One. And then you could do the 15 squared by itself. What's 15 times 15? 225. So you. Oh, OK. Do I actually know how much time there is? I do. But even if I didn't, what's good about this product? A part is zero. So whether I know this or not, I can just zero it right there. Yep, you don't have to say zero times 15. You can just show me that the whole small part there goes to zero. So two, 100, exactly. Why is it meters? Because you don't, because this is, you don't have to do analysis of units. You know what's going to happen at the end, just slap meters next to it. Almost. What's missing to assess what? Significant. Figure. How many sig figs are here? Sorry, are here. Two. How many sig figs are here? Okay. Do we even care about this one when it comes to sig figs? No, because is this measured or is this a perfect constant value? Perfect constant value, that means at what? At rest. You don't have to measure it. It's what zero is, so it's 100% precise. So that means what? Everything should be up to how many sig figs? Two only. What's 225 to two sig figs? Well, I have to cut it here, right? I have to cut right here. Is this going to be 220 or 230? Mm, what does the 5 do? Well, yeah, 5 bumps it up. So it's what? 230. How many sig figs in 230? Remember. Mm. Ah. How many sig figs in 230? Remember rule number, exactly, in whole numbers, any trailing zeros, any zeros at the end of the number, don't what? Do no, again, remember that was the debate. Some teachers count them and say how many? Three sig figs, and some teachers don't. Which one did we say we're going to do? We're not going to count. So how many? Two sig figs. So 230 here. Do you need to write that in scientific notation? Heck no. By the way, what would it be in scientific notation? Any takers? What would that 230 be in scientific notation? Ah, 2.3, exactly. By the way, would you write 2.30 times 10 to the 2? No, because 2.30 has how many sig figs? You have, when you change the scientific notation, do you change the number of sig figs? No, so it has to be 2.3 times 10 to the 2 in meters. Please don't do that. Okay? And that's a typical what? By the way, was there, listen up, was this an algebra or just a plug and play? Yeah, we did not need to rearrange, we just need to clean up the numbers. Yes, that's because what I wanted to find was already on which side of the equation? The left or the right side? It's already on the left side, so I did not have to move anything around. I just needed to plug and evaluate the numbers. Okay, so far so good? Let's go to the second problem, come on. Second. Problem. That, by the way, this one's gonna be an interesting one. Um, a helicopter traveling at a velocity of 15 meters per second, which way? West. Accelerates uniformly, of course, because we cannot do anything except uniform acceleration, otherwise you need calculus. Accelerates uniformly at a rate of seven meters per second, which way? If I'm moving, to you this is north, so that's west. Everyone, if I'm moving west, but my acceleration is east, what does that really mean? I'm actually what? I'm not really accelerating, I'm what? Because if, by the, again, what did we say the direction of positive is going to be against motion or with motion? Which way am I moving? West. But my acceleration is given what? So sign-wise, it's going to have to be given what sign? which is negative west. That's my point, exactly. For how long? Sorry, yeah, for how long in time? For four seconds. The question is, 
what would be the helicopter's final velocity? Okay, so everyone, let's sketch a diagram. Uh, which way is west? We're going to say that west is this way. So, uh, yeah, left, so everyone. Uh, so, the, so it was moving initially which way? This way. So, everyone, I'm going to say that it, uh, here's the helicopter. Done. Let's be simple. Be simple. Don't go crazy with sketches. Okay? Not everyone needs a, to be a Picasso here. All right? So, it's moving this way. Okay? It's a, fly, it's a flying egg. All right? Uh, what speed is here? 50 meters per second. Now, when you slow down, eventually, is your final speed the same, more, or less than that? Less. All right. So, uh, I'm going to sketch it again here. But with what? With less what? With less motion wind. All right, fine. I don't know what the speed is. But what do I know? I know that the time is how long? Come on. Four seconds. And are you going to put seven meters per second squared or negative seven meters per second squared on there? You're going to have to put negative because that tells you you're, you're losing your speed. So go ahead and say negative 7 meters. Uh, which way is west? Right here. So technically, everyone, here has to be east. And this one is positive, And this one is negative. All right. <laughs> What's up? Good. He's just kissing up, that's all. Sure. Oh, who doesn't? Okay. What's, what's 15? What's 15? You have five choices. What is 15 meters per second? Uh, which one, though? Because we have two kinds of velocity. Final or initial? Initial. Go ahead. VI equals 15 meters per second. Okay. What about the four seconds? Time. Thank you. Time. What's the negative 7 meters per second squared? Acceleration. What's the question asking for? How far did it travel or how much did it slow down to? Final velocity. So VF equals question mark. What's up? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, think about it. I have to give you how many things, which leaves how many things I could ask you for. So I will always just choose one of those two to ask you for. Oh, I, I have to tell you which one of the two I'm looking for, yes. If, if I don't, you either can do nothing or just what? Find the other two and just tell me here's the five, here's the five things. Choose whichever one you want, okay? Which equation, sorry, what is missing from the list? Not which unknown, what's missing? The one that's missing or unneed is the distance. Which equation has no distance in it? One, two, three, four, five. The very first one has no what? Has no uh, distance. Which one is missing? Delta D. Which equation doesn't have delta D? Equation number one. Let's write equation number one. A, VF, subtract VI over delta T. Say again. Thank you. Remember what I said. You either plug and play or use what? Algebra. Guess what? When the thing you're trying to find is on the what side? Is on the what side of the equation? Is it on the right? No. Is on, is, if it's on the left side, it's what? Straight. No, no. It's like if you. Okay. I have. Sorry. I have. If, I'm, if I have VF, VI, and delta T, what would I be looking for using that equation? A. Which. Which means I can just plug and find it. The problem now is, Ali, am I looking for something on the left or on the right? Which means what? I'm going to have to use what? Algebra. And in this case, what's the only algebra I need to use? Cross multiplication. Do you see what I mean? So whenever the thing you're trying to find is on the right side, you're going to have to do somewhat some algebra to what? To manipulate. That's all. So what's my value for A? 7 or negative 7? If you, everyone, if you did 7, 
Would that mean deceleration or acceleration? Which means the helicopter would end up at a lower or a higher speed, but you know it should end up at a what? There you go, you got it. So go ahead, negative seven, equal. What's my VF? So do I write a number or keep it VF? Keep it, v do you need to make it X? Can you make it X? But do we already have a symbol for it? Everyone, listen up, Hamid, get liberated from calling everything you don't know what x use anything else that already has the meaning of the of the value we already have vf keep calling it vf okay so vf minus what's your initial speed come on 15 what's your time what am i gonna do next so what cross multiply all right so this time what's what's anything times one I love, I love pulling this trick. I, ke I can keep saying this question until the end of the course. And you, some people will still say what? Here's the thing. You're going to say one, but you're going to write it what? Correctly as VF minus 15. But you're just so obsessed with multiplying by what? Zero. And that one is what? Zero. So you're always going to say the second the word, the last word said. Always. It's a psychology thing. All right. So what do I get? VF. Yeah, go ahead. Everyone, how many people are used to the math teacher way of canceling the fraction by multiplying 4 here and multiplying 4 here? How many people have seen that before? I have never been a fan of it, even though I never had trouble with it. But I know that so many students still can't see the what? The cancellation happened. I like to use what? It is the same effect, but please feel free to go. With. By the way, many math teachers don't like what? I'm a physics guy. I'm relaxed and laid back. Okay? Yes. Okay, okay, let me do the next problem with symbols. I'll always jump back and forth. Okay, VF, what's uh, negative seven times four? Negative seven times four. 28 with a what? With a negative. Okay, how are we gonna solve this? Move the negative, by the way, move the what? Ne always, always say it with the sign. The most common mistake is people move the 15 and they forgot to what? Move the sign with it. So you move it, so I'll, I'll write my final answer. VF equals what? Minus 28 plus 15, which is equal to what? Minus 13 what? Meters per seconds or seconds squared? Seconds, because it's a what? Is it velocity or speed? Good. No, no, no. It, no, no, everyone. We need to discuss this. Okay, pencils down, pencils down. Does anyone have any problem with the math? Do you believe that our math was 100% every step of the way? It's good. So our answer is indeed how much? Negative 13. But it's a scalar. What's the scalar, of, everyone listen up, this is important. What's the scalar version of velocity? Could speed ever be negative though? You can never have a negative speed. Because you can't have a negative what? Distance. What's, this, what's, this, everyone, what's the definition of speed? What over what? Distance over time, right? Can distance ever be negative? Can time ever be negative? So speed can never be what? Because a positive over a positive? Exactly. However, every time you think of speed, you can always reference it back to what? V velocity. And velocity could be what? No, no, could be because it's a because it's a vector. Now here's my question. Did we already put signs on these? West has been designated to be what? East has been designated to be what? My speed came out, my speed came out negative. What does that mean in velocity terms? What happens to the helicopter after four seconds? Is it still moving west? Or is it now moving east? Everyone, pencils down. I'll be the helicopter. Helicopter. Question. Which way is west to you? Come on, eyes on me. Which way is west? Left. All right. When you opened your eyes, what was my initial velocity? 15 meters going what? Going west. All right. Everyone, pencils down. Just move me. 
What's my speed right now? Come on, 50 meters going. Am I gaining speed or losing speed? How much am I losing every single second? Seven. So, stopwatch. It's been one second. What was my speed here? 15. It's been one second. Yes, yes, Muhammad got it. Now he's seeing it. It's been one second. Did I gain seven or lose seven? I lost seven. So what am I down to? What's 15? Take away seven. 15, take away seven. 15, take away 7, 8. So my speed now is a huge, is a what, logical, slow down 8. Go down, go, go on another second. So it's been how many seconds so far? Two seconds of motion. I still have to make it to how many seconds of motion? But I'm down from 15 to 8 to 1. Give me one more second. Exactly. After one second, I'm going to go from 1 what happens when we subtract 1 minus 7? Now, what does that mean? In that second, I came to a stop, and I physically what? Moved back. After one second, what's my speed? 6, but which way? Give me one more last second. 13, but in which way? But east, but east is given what sign? Do you see what I mean now? That negative does not violate the what? The positivity of speed because it respects to what? The negativity of the vector of velocity. You see that sometimes you can still get negative with a scalar quantity, but it still has meaning because you what? You acted the whole thing out. One second, you lost seven. Another second, you lost seven. And another second, you lost and went back. And another second, you even sped backwards. So that's basically why the 13 makes sense. Yes, because it has to what? Come to a stop and then what? Like, or like a what? Like a spring. Spring motion always what? Comes to a stop and then shoots back or comes back or gets yanked back. Sorry, say again. Oh, represent that mathematically? Question. The negative corresponds with what? Done. So what's the final answer technically because it's asking for final velocity? Do you say? Uh, so here's my question. Are you going to say, everyone, are you going to say, look, are you going to say my final velocity is 13 meters per second east or negative 13 meters per second east? Thank you. You cannot say negative east because what's negative east? Past west, but you're supposed to end up where? East. So you either say negative 13 west or just 13 east. Physically give me the actual... Do you know, remember, what do you always know we do with displacement and velocity? Do we keep the negative or do we like to flip it? Which is the only one that we keep the negative with? Acceleration, because we're okay with slowing down and speeding up. Okay? All right. Yes, the negative means east. So you just replace it with what? With east. That's it. So your final answer is this, everyone. Your final answer is, sorry. Uh, where's my No, no, no. Positive now. Vf, everyone, is 13 meters per second. And what's the meaning of east uh, of negative? East, according to our designation. Done. Yeah, thank you. Again, Yasmin, do you ever say that you lost negative $100? You just say, oh, what? I lost $100 because lost means what? Negative gain, which means lost is east. Negative is not east. Yes, you can always do that, as long as you know which one corresponds to which. See, that's the power of negatives and positives. They still stand for direction. Oh, because, okay, everyone, listen. Why is this, listen, why is this negative in the diagram? Because is it physically being pushed with its motion or against its motion? Which means what? If we say that motion is positive, this push has a negative direction. That's why. That's why direct, uh, diagrams are still important. Yeah, that's a gain. Think about it. What's a negative negative? What's a double negative? So it doesn't make sense to say I lost negative $100. It's like saying I went backward negative 18. That means you went forward 18. 
So never use two negatives in the same sentence because that basically means you're back again to the same positive. Okay, come on, everyone. Another one. Okay, this one is good. Remember the example, listen up. Remember the example I talked about when you are, listen up, when you are at the traffic light, not moving, and it turns green. What do you do? You go. Someone could already have been what? Moving on the other lane. Exactly. So at the moment of crossing that line, you just what? Started to move. They what? Kept what? Kept moving. Two go-karts. Listen up. Two go-karts. A and B. Race each other. Okay. What does it say here? Uh, no, no. Race each other what? Around. So they go on a track. I'm with you. But can we just cut the track and straighten it out? Yeah. If you cut the track and straighten it out, does it still, does it still keep the same line? Great. So you know what? Why think of it as a what? As a nonlinear motion? You can just think of it as a what? As a straight line of how much length? One kilometer. Perfect. By the way, it's got to make it much easier to sketch. Okay. Shh, guys, guys, come on, come on. Come on. No, no, by the way, uh, uh, okay. To anyone's point who's saying, do we have to cut it and flatten? No, you don't. You're still keeping the same speed around. I'm just going to make it easier to what? To sketch. Finish line, uh, uh, start line and what? Start line and finish line, okay? What's so special about go kart A? Come on. Travels at a? The whole time, which means what? Did it start at the beginning or was it already going around the track? This was the one already going around the track. The other guy waited until what? So cart B was what? Standing still. Until cart A crossed the, what? the start line. What did cart B then do? Accelerate. At what acceleration? 0.333 meters per second. The question is, square squared. After one kilometer of going straight, who's going to win? Who wins the race? The one who goes Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. Who wins the race? The one who, who crosses the finish line faster? Do you have to cross the finish line faster to win a race? No, that's, that's, not how they, that's not how they decide who wins a race. What always decides who wins a race? What's time? By the way, could you still cross the finish line at a lower speed than someone else and still be the one who won the race? Yeah. Think about it. You could have sped up so much at the beginning, like Hussein Bolt. Hussein Bolt, every single race he's been in, he is, oh, you see like a, there was one time where he actually crossed the finish line. He was so relaxed when he crossed it, he actually just turned to the cameras and just smiled. Like, he, like the other guys were like 20 meters back. Like he couldn't care less. Okay? So he could have slowed down and still won. Won the race. That's my point. Which means what? Other people could have crossed it at a higher what? Speed. But he already got the what? He already got the time done already. Make sense? So what's going to be the deciding factor? We need to calculate the what? The time needed to travel the one kilometer for each car. Okay, let's sketch a diagram. How am I going to sketch a diagram? I'm going to sketch how many tracks? Two. So basically a parallel line here. Sorry, like a parallel strip here and a parallel strip here. So let's go. So I guess I'm going to put cart A for, uh, first and cart B after. All right, let's do this. So everyone, here's. Here's this one. Here go. Okay. How long are both tracks by default? One kilometer, the whole thing. Okay. So, one kilometer. Uh, this is track B. This is track for A. Okay. What? Question for you, everyone. What is so special about the motion of cart A? Say again. Constant. Question for you, everyone. Listen up. This was a question in your second quiz. When something has a constant speed, okay, when someone thinks has a constant speed, still the same direction, does that qualify to be uniform motion? Constant speed, constant direction. Is that uniform motion? Yeah, that's both condition. Check, check. Does it also qualify to be uniform acceleration? But it's not accelerating. 
Thank you. No, no, hold on. What is what is the only condition for uniform acceleration? Constant direction, but what? Constant rate of change. What's the rate of change anyway? Is it being kept the same the whole time? So technically, is uniform motion a special case of uniform acceleration? Yes, of which case, zero acceleration. Is it making sense? So here's my question to you, to Yasmin especially. Everyone, listen up. Do you need to use the kinematic equation for uniform motion analysis? No, no. Do you need to? Can you? Yeah, because you're going to put the A value equal to what? But what did we always use when we had constant motion? The what? The triangle. Distance, speed, time. Is it making sense? Whenever you have uniform motion, you can use the what? Can you ever use the triangle with accelerating motion? No, because your speed keeps what? Changing up or down the whole time. So you cannot use the triangle with what? You cannot use the triangle when you hear what word? Unless this number is what? There you go. OK, so let's uh, put some numbers on, the, on this. So everyone, this is track A. So what's the speed the whole time here? What's the speed the whole time? The whole time. 20, apparently it's just revolving at 20, turning at 20. So everyone go ahead, 20 meters per second. OK, what numbers do I put here? What was the starting speed of this guy? Zero, from rest. So the speed here is zero meters per second. OK, I know the distance also. What do I also know? I know the what? By the way, when you put the acceleration on the diagram, do you put it at the beginning of the motion, at the end of the motion, or in the middle of the motion? Never at the beginning or the end. It's always what? In the middle. So you just put it, like, by the way, I always like to put it as a dashed line because it's like in progress. By the way, is it uh, negative or positive value? Yeah, because it's actually what? It's actually gaining. Thank you. So it's what? It's uh, point three three three. Uh, how, okay, you know what? How many sig figs, everyone? Let's see. How many sig figs here? Two. How many here? Three. How many here? Three, because this one doesn't count. So uh, if, if we're going to use the, the, the one kilometer, we have to keep everything to what? Because you always go by the what? By the lowest, weakest link, okay? Or the least precise. Yes. No. Would you rather buy a scale? that gives you a point zero or doesn't? Like when you step on it, would you rather read 63 or 63.0? So that means what? The zero matters, it's significant. So, okay, decimal zeros, always count. Decimal zeros, as long as they are what? After the decimal and not, uh, uh, sorry, after the decimal? 1.10. 1 1.10, it, it still would matter. Yes, yes, because again, would you rather buy a scale that tells you 1.1 or 1.10? I'd rather buy the one that gives me 1.10 because it's more what precise and sensitive. That's why. If it was 10, that's just how many? One, because it's just what? Zeros here do not matter. None, decimal zero do not matter. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's go to the what? To the second slide, everyone. Let's do the calculation. All right, second slide. Car A. Car A. What's so special about car A? Uniform acceleration or technically uniform motion? Okay, let's do the triangle. Here's the triangle. Okay, distance, speed, time. Do I know the distance? How much? Sorry, how far? One kilometer. Do I know the speed? Constant at how far? Uh, sorry, at how speed? 20 meters. Per. So what do I need to know? The time it takes it to go one kilometer at a speed of 20 meters per second. But there's a problem. I have kilometers, I have meters. What do I need to do with the units? Would you rather convert small to big or big to small? Big to small, because then you don't what you don't end up with decimals. It's, it's better to multiply than to what? Because when you multiply, you never get what? You never get long decimals. But when you divide, you always do, or you mostly do. So everyone, delta t. Sorry, delta T, delta T equals what? 
1,000 meters divided by what? 20 what? Meters per second. What's 1,000 divided by 20? Anyone? How much? Yeah, there are 50 20s in 1,000. So 50. And what's the unit? You don't even have to know if those units cancel out. It has to be in what? It's time. It has to be in what? In seconds. Done. That's it. It takes the first car 50 seconds to go from start to finish. How about the second car? Can I use the triangle? Why not? Because this V is not what? Exactly. It's changing all the time. So a logical question would be, which value would you use? That's why you can't use any. We have to use what? OK. So what, uh, what kinematic equation do I, what kinematic given do I know? VI is equal to what? Zero. Acceleration is equal to what? Um, what do I also know? No, I want to find time. I want, yeah, I know the distance. Everyone, what's missing from here? Not what's unknown, what's missing from the list? V, V final. Which equation does not care about V final? One, two, three, four, or five. Which one does not care about VF? The third equation. So you do what? You do delta D equals VI delta T plus one half A delta T squared. Hey, what's the good news about VI? It's a zero. So it what? It cancels. This part, no, but here's the question that so many people ask. But Mr. Ramadan, I don't know the delta T. Like it's not a number. How can I cancel it? Think about it. Delta T, do we know it now? But delta T is eventual. Exactly. And it, eventually, it's going to be a what? A number. What's zero times any number? The only number that zero cannot bring down to zero is what? Infinity. But infinity itself is not a number. You see what I mean? So any zero times any number, no matter how huge, no matter how what sign is it, positive or negative, it's always what? So zero times any variable is still what? Because what's a variable? A variable is a number that you don't know yet. So everyone go ahead and you cross this one like this, and you go zero. So delta D. OK, what's my distance? Come on. Oh, my bad. I made a mistake here. This cannot be in what? Or you can write it in kilometer, but you better use it in uh, Sorry, you better use it as what now? Yeah, either switch this one to kilometers per second squared, which I urge you not to do, or switch this one to what? A thousand meters is easy. So everyone, sorry, it's equal a thousand. OK, so one thousand equals what? One half point three three three. Sorry, I'm not. Damn, I need another. How the heck am I going to solve this? Oh, OK, hold on, hold on. You said divide. You might be right. I just want to know what you mean. Huh. Everyone, shh. Oh, so if you're saying either what? Divide 0.333 by 2 or multiply 0.33 by what? By 1 half. Yes, OK. Can someone tell me what's 0.333 exactly? 0.333 divided by 2. Like, what's half of it? It's point exactly, 0.1665 times what? Delta T squared. Good. Some cleaning up was done. What's my next cleaning up? OK, someone else other than Mohammed. Otherwise, he gets it. What should be my next step? No more physics. Math takes over now. OK, hold on. Mm, square root, we're going to have to do it, but am I going to have to do it now? Question for you, everyone. What is the, what's the answer here? What's the answer to this? What's the square root of x, what's the square root of 4? Plus or minus 2. What if it was this way? What do you have to do first? What would you do if this was just an x? How do you solve 4x equals 4? What do you do? You, so you always have to what first? You have to divide. You cannot square root until you what? You clean up that annoying coefficient at the, at the beginning. OK? So what do I divide by? Both sides? Come on. Yes. 
So delta T squared is equal to 1,000. Divide out 0.1665. How much? Come on. How much is that? That's got to be like 6,000 something. How much? Sorry, say again, Hamid. 6,000. So 6006. Give me one decimal. Just one. Oh, okay. Oh, so just 6006. Is this my final answer? What do I need to do to that? Square? No, not flip. What's the opposite of a square? Square root. What's the opposite of a cube? Cube root. What's the opposite of degree four? The, yeah, no, 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 no. It's, it's actually called the square root. The only one, by the way, that has a name is the square root. All the other ones are what? Cubic root, fourth root, fifth root, sixth root. Do you see what I mean? Just reverse the power. By the way, how many people did exponent laws? Exponent laws in great. Yes. What's anything to a power of half? That's a square root. No, no. This will be done in grade 11 functions and 12 functions. A power of half is a what? A power of thir a third is a what? Cubic root. A, a power of fourth is a what? Fourth root. A power of 120th is a what? 20th root. So a square root with a 20 on top. That's what it means. So can someone give me the square root? So delta t being the square root of 6. 0, 0, 6 is how much? But we need how many digits? 77. Who wins the race? Car A or car B? Who traveled in less time? It took this constant motion of 50 seconds. Was car B able to win? Give me possible scenarios of what needs to change to make car B win. What, by the way, is there only one solution or multiple things? Baha, give me one. So faster what? Acceleration. So he could what? Actually what? Gun it at a higher acceleration. What else could have been done? Ali. Higher. So instead of starting at zero, maybe he should what? Have started to move a little bit before that guy what? Cross the start line with him. What else? So you could start, you could change A, you could change VI. You obviously can't change time. Time is the one that controls the whole process. You could, yeah, unless you can change something with what car A, what could you do to car A? Slow him. Slow him what? Slow him down. You see what I mean? But that's basically it, okay? Done. That's it. So car A wins.